per usual living on this channel is for educational purposes only and is not intended as financial advice. All right, so let's do ETH on a separate video just because I went a little long in that BTC video. Um, once again, active addresses, BTC clearly uptrend, ETH oscillating, arguably downtrend. On-chain on -chain metrics are important for me when influencing trading decisions. If we're seeing rising addresses, if we're seeing rising transactions, it's obviously bullish. If we're seeing the opposite, uh, certainly less bullish, more bearish. So it's another reason to me why this ETH move was even less convincing than the BTC move. The on-chain metrics just don't support uh, the 60 plus percent move that's happened over the past couple of weeks. So that's another reason why I'm even more concerned about going long here, or holding spot here uh, before we get a pullback for ETH. Uh, again, looking at the futures premiums, this is ETH on the right side. So if we compare the OKEX spot to, uh, excuse me, OKEX futures to spot prices, you can see we've had this nice buildup on quarterly premium. Historically, it can get much higher than this just since June. So to me says it's plenty of room for up. Doesn't necessarily mean it's going to keep moving up. Uh, even the weekly premium isn't that big, just nominally, not percentage wise. People always yell at me, you should look at the percentage, not the nominal, whatever. Uh, I like I like, you know, plain English values. So, <laughs> um, yeah, so the, the futures premiums are important to look at just as a gauge of, are we just so overly bullish here that things just need to pull back a little bit, you know, like that was in June. Uh, Percentage-wise, maybe it's 5 to 8% uh, for BTC or ETH. Uh, you know, are things just super bearish here like they were in May and April uh, that we just need to reverse here? You know, how crowded is this trade? What do these premiums look like? So not actionable on its own, but interesting to look at in a vacuum and compare historically to where it's been. Now, the DeFi narrative has ramped up exponentially over the past couple months, which is fine. I'm long Ethereum. Let's go. Infinity. I don't care. I haven't quite bought into the narrative itself. I've said this a few times, but to me, it's just you know people locking up their ETH to borrow it or lend it for other people to go long on ETH. So it's just like this long squeeze waiting in, in the making. Uh, nevertheless, it broke a billion, one billy locked. Uh, locked is also a loose term. You know, it's locked in the sense that you can move your money in your banking account from checking to savings. Like it's, <laughs> it's, it's not a difficult process to unlock this. So caution, uh, I caution people who are using that term because it's not necessarily like a CD or anything where it's locked for a certain amount of time. Um, another thing to pay attention to is ETH locked versus the USD value. So ETH locked itself has started to fall, which again tells me as, as far as the supply is concerned, there's less supply locked, even though USD obviously at an all time high. So again, this gives me caution for this ETH move because if now, if you know, more and more supply was being locked, great, but not the case currently. So let's start like on the weekly maximum possibilities here what could what What are the craziest craziest stuff that could happen right like how how crazy can this move be over the next couple of months now i've talked about this i think already once but if we actually draw it out and we look at okay what if this is an adam eve now an adam eve is a double bottom a v and a u typically the ad or the eve is not as extreme as the adam um you know we might even see adam adam or just a strict vv w double top, double bottom situation. I don't think that's necessarily the case here, but let's say it's a double bottom. And what's the projections on that? Somewhere between five, uh, 440 and 530. So that's something to watch for. Anywhere between 300 and 320 would be the horizontal to watch. This is, again, this is weeks or months down the line, but it's good to keep this in the decision tree pocket if and when it does occur. Another more painful option is some sort of ascending triangle that goes out to 2022 and measured move is around 600 for that. I don't think either of these is super likely. You know, the Adam Eve is probably more likely than this. Certainly this would be very painful <laughs> for a lot of people. Um, it would be healthy for the market because it's slow. It would be obvious. So it's easy to trade, um, but not an impossibility either. Now, if you look at what the cloud wants, the cloud is setting up for one of these insane edge to edge moves, you know, from 200 to 750, which sounds insane when you say it out loud, obviously, but historically based on my settings for this time frame, um, this is the cloud is saying this is possible. 
One thing you want to wait for if you're actually trading this is the bullish TK cross at the bottom, which isn't yet the case, but if ETH sort of goes sideways over the next few weeks, months, it'll happen pretty quickly. Uh, another thing I'm looking at on the weekly cloud is this weekly Kijun level. You can see it got pushed up a little bit this week and it hit it on the last weekly close. Typically we, you know, we bounce down or from that level. So this is one of the reasons, among others, that this ETH run may reverse here. Uh, the next target, if we keep going, would be this cloud level, somewhere around 280, something like that. Now, if we get through 322 and to 382, it's like a different ballgame completely. That's we're in mega bubble territory with ETH, and you know we'll complete this this Adam Eve. So that's something to watch for. That's probably the least likely to happen in the near term, but definitely something to watch over the weeks and months. 750 probably won't happen until Q4 if it does happen this year. But again, it sounds crazy to say it out loud, it sounds impossible now, but it's something to watch over the next few months. Looking at how the trend has shifted, we're very clearly canceled out this you know previous bear trend of X hundred days, whatever it was, 600 days. Um, you know, it was flirting with canceling it, was unable to, and pretty clearly it's canceled it. Haven't even gotten a golden cross yet on the 5200, just to show how strong this has been, how quick this has been. We're above the 200 on the daily, which is obviously a good sign above the 200 for the first time, you know, consistently since June, July, similar to BTC. If we look at a different pitchfork and we look at a bullish pitchfork and pick some anchor points, some highs and some lows, this lines up pretty well with 300 ETH in the near term, which sounds insane. Isn't what I was expecting at all. But if it can break through this VP VR level, the PF really likes the median line at 300. It's got a pivot there. It's got the next VP VR resistance there. So there's a lot of confluence. It's a psychological support resistance level. So if we keep going, some miracle. Uh, 300 is certainly the level that I think a lot of people are watching at, the, at that point. Now, one of the reasons I don't think we keep going, again, we did cancel out a bear div, but now RSI is at 80 plus historically. There've been less than less than ten times ETH on the daily has gotten this high, so certainly long with caution here. That's what it's telling me. Um, the TK lines actually look better on ETH than they do on the daily BTC, as far as how spread apart they are. But one thing to caution here is just the distance from price from these levels. Again, it's it's almost doubled to two hundred daily at this point, and it's certainly very far away from the Tenkin Kijun. So at the very least, you'd expect some chilling out, some pulling back. You know, I can see it putting in some wick top and then pulling back to here and then just like going sideways for a little while. Let the market catch up with the insanity. But this uh, TK disequilibrium C-clamp isn't necessarily as bearish as the VTC one. Um, but the distance from, price's distance from these values certainly says be careful longing this up here. And again, looking at the 5200, it has, hasn't even gotten its bull cross yet. And it's just this insane. I mean, these candles don't even look real. <laughs> it looks like, they look like candles someone would, would just like draw, you know, like this is what could happen. Um, but that's, that's crypto for you. Uh, the 200 is probably at 180 or less at this point. I don't think, I think we'll struggle to get below 200 if we do pull back. Uh, we'll probably get below 200 on a wick. You know, I could see us just Eiffel Towering all the way back to 190, something like that. So again, that says be careful long in this. Um, there was a prevailing idea, much like the BTC, macro inverted head and shoulders, that we were going to chill out around 200. Didn't happen. Just kept going. Now we're, you know, wherever we are on these horizontals, it's like none of this really matters. TA's all made up. But yeah, this is just to show that uh, all that stuff got canceled out. And um, if you look at ETH BTC, a lot of people talking about that as well. I'd mentioned this uh, Adam and Eve possibility in the last couple of videos, and it looks like it's completed now. It's sort of chilling at the resistance level, horizontal resistance level of this Adam Eve. And it's got plenty of upside resistance. It's got a pivot. It's got another pivot. If it can consolidate it here, get its 5200 bull cross, let the cloud stay bullish, I certainly think it can get back to this zone of around 0.03. I didn't measure this out, but the Adam and Eve target is probably around that level, 0.03. And again, RSI here is the highest it's been 
since 2018. You know, I can't I can't really eyeball this too well, but maybe it's the second highest RSI we've ever seen on EPTC. Just another reason to say be cautious here on any longs. Obviously, it's very overbought in a vacuum. RSI is telling you to be careful. And just for the people who are poo-pooing chart patterns or TA, you know, I had this inverted Adam Eve previously, and it hit the 1618 pretty easily to the downside. So I wouldn't discount, even the, even looking at this, seeing that it's like separated a little bit or whatever, I wouldn't discount it. You know, I think, especially in a higher time frame, it's pretty convincing that it's at the very least a double bottom. I like Adam Eve narrative, you know, VU. So it definitely has upside, room for up, upside for sure. And this is the first time it's been above the 200 since June 2018. Now, if we look at our, our friend Doge, mentioned this in the last video, it has broken above the weekly cloud. I repeat, alert above the weekly cloud. Historically, it's been bullish. You know, if, if you just trade the range lows to range highs, you're longing anything below 30 and selling anything around 90 to 100. Not exactly rocket science. I think a lot of people are looking at this. A lot of people have the, it's not alt season until it's it's doze, doge season. Man, that's hard to say. So that's all I have for this one. Like, dislike, comment, share, subscribe. Hit me up on Twitter and happy trading.